in continuation of the teaching on the topic Christianity, I try to explain to church that we don't have Christianity from Genesis to John. What we have in Genesis, we saw people that worship God, but they were not Christian. Abraham was. Abraham worshipped God. Noah worshipped God. Joseph worshipped God. And as at that time, there was no Judaism. Judaism is a religion that started at the Ten Commandments through Moses. They have their own high priest. Praise the Lord. And I told you that the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they recorded the earthly account of Jesus Christ on earth. Christianity has not started by then. Christianity started in the book of Acts chapter 2. Why? That was when the Holy Ghost came. People received baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that was when the New Testament started. All the earthly preachings of Jesus in the book of Mark, in the book of Luke, in the book of Matthew and John, they were based on the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. They were based on Old Testament. New Testament has not started. Because for New Testament to start, to start Jesus must die. The testator must die. So until Jesus died, rose, and his body was received in heaven, then Holy Ghost came back as confirmation. That's when we have Christianity. From the book of Exodus, I think chapter 20, up to the time of the death of Jesus Christ, what we have is Judaism. It, it, it is a form of religion that, that the, the family called Judah started. And they are the family of Israel. We have people that believe in it. Praise the Lord. So we, didn't, we never have what we call Christianity today from Genesis to John. Who are the Christians? Different people are worshipping God. Don't make mistake. Are you getting it now? Before Jesus came, people were worshipping God. Abraham worshipped God. Noah worshipped God. Isaac worshipped God. God. Joseph worshipped God. I told you last Sunday that nobody told Joseph that sleeping with the wife of your boss, Potiphar, is a sin. There was no Ten Commandments by then. And Joseph knew. How did he knew? No. The reason why I'm trying to explain is that I found out that large percentage of people that are calling themselves Christian, they are practicing Old Testament they are practicing a testament that has been done the way with. I refer to it in the book of Luke chapter 10 last time, that all those practices, they are shadows. And I told you categorically, there are parallel lines, there are comparison between Judaism and Islam. But not with Christianity. Praise the Lord. And where is but, you know, if you are the type that normally go online like us, you will see some controversy going on online now. Praise the Lord. And some people are trying to defend their religion. I want to advise you, please, don't, def don't defend Jesus Christ. You are not sent to defend him. You are to be a witness. And what does it mean to be a witness? Jesus died and resurrected. When he died, he died for me. When he rose, I rose. And because he's now resurrected, I have the hope of resurrection. And because he resurrected, I am acceptable to God. That is your witness. You are to witness that Jesus is no longer in the grave, but not to defend. Praise the Lord. If, any, if you see anybody who claims to be Christian and is fighting because they insulted Jesus Christ, he must be another Boko Haram. Yes. 
In the heavenly ministry of Jesus Christ, they want to arrest him. They were about to arrest him. They came. And Peter withdrew his sword. Bam! And he cut off somebody's ear. He just said, what do you mean? Stop it. Keep your sword. He picked the hair. Fix it back. When he was next to the cross, they were mocking him. The soldier. He said, after all, this man. After all, this man said he's a child of God. He's a son of God. Let's see what will happen. They were mocking did he ever talk? The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, it says, he was a, like a lamb, led to slaughter, dumb but never speak. The smoking, boss! Just turn. Don't say anything. So if any Christian said, he wants to defend, Jesus is not a dead God. You defend a dead God. When you have a dead God, that's the one you need to defend. Jesus is living. At the right time, he will defend himself. There is an affair preaching online that says, Jesus stole kete kete. The one that says, he has a girlfriend. Praise the Lord. Let me give you an example. The soldier that would nail Jesus to cross, they were there mocking, mocking. But at the right time, there was thundering. There was lightning. Darkness covered the ground. One of the soldiers said, truly, this man, son of God. That's how God, that's how Jesus defended himself. He preached in a place. He was rejected. His disciples said, let's come down fire like Elijah. He said, shut up. You don't know the spirit that is following you. Don't do it. Don't you know I can call for angels? But I don't need it. Christians are to be witness. Don't defend Jesus. You have to witness that he's no longer in the clinic. But if somebody is abusing him, they abuse him to his face. He never talks. But at the right time, he will talk. There was a time. How many of you know Saul before he became Paul? Have ever heard that name? Wave your hand. You know that man struggled so much and did a lot of evil. But at the right time, the Lord Jesus appeared to him. To Paul, he was persecuting the church. And Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are thou? He said, I am Jesus. The person you are persecuted. What should I do? The great light come upon him, fell down and became blind. Now, start preaching the same thing you are preached against. Praise the Lord. What do you say? Jesus told Kete Kete, you surprise some of them, we end up preaching the same person they have criticized. But you cannot defend God. Let God defend himself. If you have idol in your house, you can defend the idol. You can defend Sanko, you can defend Ugun. Are you getting it now? But Jesus is greater than that. Are you getting it now? How many of you know what happened to Brazil? How many of you are online that know what happened to Brazil when they had a carnival? I think in the month of March. They said there is no God. They designed somebody, a human being. They look, they designed like a Lucifer. And they designed another man like Jesus Christ. That one was dealing with Jesus and they were so excited. It was a big carnival. People came from different countries. Did Jesus talk? He talked. When flood came, he did not really kill them, but he carried out all their resources. He took it away. All their resources. Praise the Lord. So, when you are a Christian, the Bible told us that arguments that we rather lead to error, we should not be involved. When you want to argue with people who are antichrist, by the time you want to win them, they will stone you. Because you will speed you through, I will pick their heart. That's what happened to Stephen. Stephen was arguing with the Pharisees. He got to a stage they cannot win his, the argument against him. They have to lie and start stoning him. And you know the stony was supervised by Paul. How many of you recollect? That was the one who commanded. Stone him! And he, had, he was holding his clothes. And now back to my teaching. I'm laying foundation. Beloved, Christian, 
a Christian is a different set of people. Not that people that go to church or synagogue are Christian. Christians are different set of people. Why are they different? Their own lifestyle is based on the personality of Jesus Christ. It is not everybody that worship God that you can call Christian. Here and here very well. It's not everybody that worship God that you can call Christian. Hello? And that doesn't mean God is not answering their prayer. Don't ever think that because somebody is not a Christian, God is not answering his prayer. No, 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 no. You know what? You know one thing about God? It's a kind of God that reigns both over the wicked and the good. If it is raining today, will God say this is the farmland of the wicked? Rain will not come. No, that's not. God blesses the world. He blesses everybody. Are you getting it now? Praise the Lord. I want to show you some examples of people in the Bible. Because of the time, I will show you an example of Paul. Then the, the Ethiopian Enoch. Praise the Lord. Those set of people, they are worshippers before they eventually became Christian. They are what? Worshippers. Hallelujah. All worshippers and default people are not Christian. The case of Cornelius, Act chapter 10. Quickly, project Act chapter 10. Cornelius happened to be a man that is so devoted. But he is not, he was not a Christian. You can be devoted and not be a Christian. Christians are the people who depend and rely on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. A centurion of the band called Italian band. The next verse. A devout man. I wish you get another fashion so you can see the meaning of being devout in the, in, in the English that you are familiar with. He said a devout man, a man that fear God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Man that what? That fear God. There are people who are not Christian, but they what? They fear what? God. Look at this. He said he was a religious man. And all other who live in his house were worshipper of the true God. But they are not Christian. They are not what? They are not Christians. He and his household were pious, gentle, God worshipper. He gave generosity to those in, the, in, in needs among the Jewish people and pray to God and pray to God constantly. The fact that somebody is sprinkled to God constantly, it goes, that doesn't make him a Christian. No, it doesn't. Let's read on. If this man is a Christian, they will not have told him to go and call for Peter. Peter will preach to him. He will know what to do. The next verse. On uh, one day, at nearly three o'clock in the afternoon, he, clear, he clearly saw an angel from God in the future. The angel came to him and said, Cornelius. Started his star at the angel and replied, What is it, Lord? The angel said, Your prayers and your compassionate heart are like a memorial offering to God. This man was not yet a Christian, but God remembered his prayer. So don't be surprised. It's not everybody, it's not only Christian that God answered their prayer. No. That's a reality. That is Bible. This man was not a Christian, but God was answering his prayer. So, answer to prayer is not the only thing that makes us to know who is going to heaven or who is a Christian. That is why you see a lot of people who claim to be Christian, they are not Christian, they don't know the world, they are only going for solution. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Most of the churches, 
Do you know why churches are springing up all over the world and why people are moving from one place? It's a solution that we, people are looking for, not God. Amen. The next fast, send a messenger to Joppa at once and summon a certain Simeon, the one known as Peter. He is the guest in Simon the, Tan uh, the Tanner, whose house near the sea coast. When the angel who was speaking to him and gone, because of time, let me stop there. This man sent for Peter. Do, please follow. Before he sent for Peter, the Bible says he was a gentle man. Gentle man. A worshiper. A committed man. Are you getting it now? But the problem is that this man is not a Christian. A lot of people, a lot of churches that you have, that, that we have today, most of them are indirectly practicing the religions of Judaism under the disguise of Christianity. There's a wide gap between Christianity and Judaism. Judaism is based on Ten Commandments. Christianity is based on Christ and Christ and Christ. Praise the Lord. That's, another, that's one man. That's another man, Paul himself. Let's read in Galatians chapter 1, I think from verse 13. Galatians chapter 1. This is one man who crossed from his being religious man, he became Christian. God answered his prayer. He said, you need to do one thing. What we need to do? Go. Call Peter. Peter will tell you what you need to do. Are we in Galatians chapter 1 verse 13? Yes. You have heard of my conversation in time past on the Jewish religion. This is Paul talking here. On what? Jewish religion. How that beyond measure I persecuted the church. A particular Bible says, after the church, you call it Christian. Praise the Lord. Paul was a committed Jew. A committed man. A reputable man in the religion of Judaism. And under Judaism, killing somebody for your religion is not a sin. I repeat, if you don't hear. Under the religion of Judaism, that is, it is based on Ten Commandments, killing somebody. Are you getting it now? To defend your religion is not a sin. That was why people like Paul we go score free for killing Christians. There's no authority that we are them by then. Because as far as Saul was by then, he was defending his faith. And we have some people that are close to that today. They can kill people all in the name of defending their faith. And if you are a Christian, you intend to do that, you are not a Christian. Christian must not eliminate life. Christian must not kill anybody to defend your faith. You don't have the lenses. Paul said, I persecuted the church. Hallelujah. And he said, and wasted it. Look at that statement. Waste. He was given the governmental lenses to waste the life of Christian. So, you know, I, 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 when, when you see some Christians, they just, all that we call Christians today, some of them are still practicing Ten Commandments. And they are doing religion called Judaism. Are you getting it? I'm not saying they are not worshipping God. Don't misquote me. Nearly every religion in the world say they are worshipping God. The good man will say he's worshipping God. So, good man will say he's worshipping God. Are you getting it now? Are the Christians will say he's worshipping God. Are you getting it now? That's it. But Paul, he was Saul by then. Before he became Paul, he told us what he did. He said, I wasted the church. Praise the Lord. And profited in the Jewish region above many, my equals, in my whole nation, being more exceedingly serious of traditions of my father. 
What some people who claim to be Christian today, they are only defending traditions of their fathers. They are only what? Defending what? Traditions of their father. They are not practicing Christianity. Praise the Lord. And I told you some early apostles did the same thing. They didn't kill them, but some of them, they were preaching Judaism in combination with what they learned from Christ until Paul came and separates and bring out the difference. The next line. But when he pleased God, who separated me from my mother womb and called me by grace. That's one of the things you know about Christians. They are called by grace. Under other religion, you labor for your salvation. You struggle and work out. You labor for your salvation. But in Christendom, it is grace. And what is grace? It stands on what Jesus has achieved. Praise the Lord. Nearly every religion has a way and approach by which you get confession, by which you have forgiveness of sin. There are religions that if you sin, the next thing is that you go and get a sharp object. Hello? There are religions that when you sin and you want to, you want to atone for your sin or you want to seek uh, a forgiveness, you go and get a sharp object, you'll be cutting yourself on your body. And as the blood is coming down, you believe that you are atoning for yourself. Somebody says, is that correct? It's correct. Go and read the story of the prophet of Baal who had contest with uh, Elijah. When the sacrifice refused to catch fire, what was the next thing? They started cutting themselves with knife in season, incision upon themselves. Thank God for Christianity. We have liberty. You don't have to cut yourself to receive forgiveness of sin. Immediately say, Jesus, you are my Lord. Your sin is wiped off. Praise the Lord. The Jew must kill an animal to get forgiveness of sin. There are some religion for them to get forgiveness of sin. You have to say, "God forgive me several times." Are you getting it now? They may say you have to say two hundred times. There are some religion you have to go and take a special bath. Then God forgive you, Abi. But in Christendom, in Christianity. Are you getting it now? We are forgiven based on Christ. Why? The suffering that he suffered, the blood that he shed, he shed it for you. And this is a revelation. It's very difficult for people to understand. It's unless God revealed it to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I told you when people are comparing some religion to Christianity, they are not correct. They can compare Genesis to John or to Mark but not with Galatian not with Corinthian not with Roman because inside Galatia one of the testimonies we have is that Paul said I've been crucified with Christ the same man who persecuted the church who persecuted Christ he came back after salvation and revelation he said I've been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ lives in me the life I now live, I live by the faith of Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In Christ, we say we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above principality and power. Some other, when you say principality, you are talking of angels. Some other kingdom and region, they believe so much in angels to the extent they call angels in their prayer, but we don't need, Christians don't need to call angels in prayers. You are far above principality, including the angelic beings. The realm God put Christian angels are not there. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you the realm, the realm in which God put Christian. Because Christians are they, they are people that are risen with Christ. Though they are still on heart, but they are seated with Christ in heavenly places. They are far above principalities and power. Praise the Lord. And Bible says to Christians, say, Christ is your life. Amen. Christians are not begging for a life. Christ is your life. When the Bible says Christ is your life, it's telling you Christ is your what? Your material possession, they don't define your what? 
You may have a plane, you may have a helicopter, you may have yachts, you may have self fracker. They are not really your what. Jesus Christ is your what. And that's why the Bible says you are bought with a price. There is no any religion that will say they are bought with a price. Only Christians can say we are bought with a price. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So when somebody is comparing Christianity and saying, eh, they did this, they did that, up to the earthly life of ministry of Jesus, what was in operation was Judaism. Under Judaism, what a man sweat he would eat. Under Judaism, vengeance cannot be cured with prayer. Praise the Lord. Under Judaism, an eye to an eye. Under Judaism, you are allowed to have faith for yourself. But in Christianity, no. He said, give room for the vengeance. Vengeance is man. That's why at times it seems as if Christians are the most dullest set of people. Praise the Lord. That's why Christians look at what? Dullest, the most set of people. Somebody now say, yes. The next thing is that I come to church with AK-47. Or I come with Pana. You know what we call Pana? Praise the Lord. Or you come to church with Cain. You now say you see an enemy, you must beat them. You better go and remove the regarding of Christianity. You are not a Christian. You are not. Read your Bible very well. When the early church were persecuted, they rather scatter away. They leave. And Jesus said, if you go to any house to go and preach, they rejected you. He said, leave the place. If they rejected you in one city, go to another city. He said, you cannot go around the whole city of the world till I come. Praise the Lord. So somebody now say, they rejected me in this place now. The next thing is we are going to fight. You don't know what you are doing. How many of you know there is one comedian who normally preach with force on the, on the internet? One comedian that will wear suits like this. When you say you don't receive Jesus, you can go and get bottle. Bah! And say, say, it's... <laughs> no, that one is a comedy. Hallelujah. All that people are practicing and they call Christianity, they are continuation of Judaism. Christianity is never a continuation of Judaism. It's a new way of life and it started by the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If it is the same thing with Judaism, you will not be persecuting Christian. Are you getting it now? If what Jesus brought it's the same thing that the Jews are practicing. Jew will not kill Jesus. Don't forget, Jew are the one who kill Jesus. The only thing they work in conjunction with the government of power of the day. Praise the Lord. Amen. Under the religion of Judaism, they have their own physical high priest that must do sacrifice for himself every year. But in Christianity, Jesus is our own what? High priest. I don't know whether the thing is here. Yes. If you read Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, you will see there. Christ is our own high priest. And our own high priest is a permanent high priest. Not the one that makes atonement every year. And once your high priest is acceptable, you are acceptable. That's the difference. Praise the Lord. So Lord Jesus is acceptable. If you are a Christian, you are acceptable. And the difference is that you should look out of yourself and look unto Jesus. The reason why some of you are struggling with your Christian journey is that you always look at yourself. You rise today, you fall tomorrow. You rise today, you fall tomorrow. You rise today, you fall tomorrow. And let me tell you, there is nothing good in any man that can please God. I repeat. There is nothing good in any man that can what? That can what? That can please God. Remember, a man wants to assist God in the Bible. He was carrying the Ark of Covenant. The covenant was about falling down. He wants to assist God. He hold the Ark of what happened to him. He died. 
And some of you are trying to assist God. Praise the Lord. Instead of trusting God. Yes. Instead of trusting God. There is nothing in man. In man. That can please God beside Christ. When Christ enters you. Wham, you are pleasing unto God. Let me tell you. As far as the church. All over the world is concerned. When I say church. I mean people that believe in Christ. They are acceptable before God. Only in Christ. As far as God is in heaven, are you getting it now? He, he recognizes, he recognizes the high priest, Jesus Christ. And he look at you through Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hello? There are people that have, that they can never die. How do I mean? They've created a good name. They are what? Good name. Once you hear the name, you saw their grand grandchild and you hear the name. Are you getting it now? You are willing to assist. You don't really know the child, but immediately you mention the name of his father, forefathers. You love him. God Almighty loved the church. He loved Christian just because of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And that's why you see, see Christian all over the world. See the movement, see the changes, see transformation, see what is happening, all because of Jesus. It's because of Jesus. So why am I preaching this? I want you to take your mind off the law. It's a shadow. Jesus is the reality. Praise the Lord. When you talk about righteousness, Jesus is your righteousness. We have it here. Praise the Lord. My high priest, my righteousness. Praise the Lord. The righteousness that people are claiming, you know what Jesus said? They said, Jesus, you are a good man. He said, there is no good man. If Jesus denied the fact that there is no good man, who are you? Praise the Lord. And what is your definition of a good man? Eh? Because it's good to you, it's giving something to you. Do you know how many people that is punishing to bless you? It's a good man, it's a good man, it's a good man. Praise the Lord. Do you know the numbers of souls he is afflicting to bless you? Praise the Lord. And with the church, we are not free from it. We are not what? What did I say? We are not free from it. People that donate specially are the people we recognize. And they are the good members of the church. That is fake. That is human judgment. Hello? Ah! His suffering is too big. The day, he, the, the month he missed the tithe, it's reflected in the finance of the church. And when he is not available, they have to go and visit the person specially. And all other members of the church who doesn't have, they now look as nobody. Have you been to Rayewa? That is not Christianity. I'm telling you, that's not Christianity. Christianity is not like that. Christianity under Christianity, everybody, so long you are saved, we are the same. Now, I'm at advantage. Because of the levels of understanding I have, that does not mean I'm more holier than you. That's a fact. Are you getting it now? Each of us, we are made holy by the blood of Jesus. Ah, that man is very good. He's eloquent when he teach. His teaching is perfect. That doesn't mean I don't have my own faults. Praise the Lord. But I'm acceptable to stand at the altar and to preach because I am washed by the blood. Praise the Lord. And that the same way for all Christians. There is nobody who is a Christian who knows his right that cannot work miracle for himself. I repeat. I repeat. There is nobody who is a Christian. A Christian is somebody who believes in Jesus. There is nobody who is a Christian 
who know is led from the right through the word of God that cannot perform miracle for himself. You know why? These signs have followed those who believe. Are you a believer? If you believe in Christ, sign must follow you. If sign is not following you, you are not applying what you know, what you have. It's either you don't know you have sign or you are not applying it. Praise the Lord. I have, I, I have cause to travel yesterday and the vehicle was misbehaving. I spoke to the car. I'm not going to abandon you, but then you take us, go, you take us, come. Praise the Lord. And when we are now coming, the road was so rough, that was when they moved better. Praise the Lord. Because it responded to the word of God. And it can happen to anybody. The word of God is your mouth to speak to your business, to speak to your children, to speak to your marriage, to speak to your life on a daily basis. The word of God is in your mouth. Hallelujah. I want to declare the word of God to your life. Speak the word of God to your life. If you don't know it, just say the Lord is my shepherd, it's not being warned. I have more than enough. Declare Jesus to be your life. Jesus is my life. Jesus is my power. Jesus is my glory. I walk in beauty. I walk in dominion. Anywhere I appear, the glory of Jesus is speaking for me. Declare it that anywhere I appear, the glory of Jesus is speaking for me. Anywhere I appear, anywhere my name is mentioned, the glory of Jesus is speaking for me. And that it is. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.